Hey everyone, this is a tale of two powders and the adventure that both of these had with the different weights of bullets that I tested. Now we do, currently right now I am using the Lever Evolution powder as my main powder for my six arc. It's a bolt action. And now I'm gonna compare it to the new um, uh, Winchester Stay Ball. So, what I'm basically going to do and is part of this tale is I'm going to try to do some load development and trying out where's the limit, where's the sweet spots for each of these powders. The first time I went out, and this is going to be in two parts. Part one, I'm going to be running a 108 um, ELD match Hornady ammo. And then... This is a tale of two powders. I'm currently doing load development on my six arc bolt action. And I just received the new uh, Winchester Stayball match powder. And I want to compare it to my Lever Evolution powder that I've been using on the six arc. I do understand that the Stayball match is, um, shall we say, uh, temperature insensitive so I want to do a comparison to it so in the first test that I'm going to do is I'm going to match up both of these powders running through a 105 burger bullets that you see right here and I want to do a comparison and contrast and see how they perform as I start doing load development then on part two I'm gonna try something different, some unique. Based off the results that I get on my first round to the range uh, to do load development, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix match them in, in, in a sense. I'm going to be running a um, the burger again and find the one, the, the charge that I think works best. Okay, so on part two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the test based off of the results that I got on my first time out in the range doing load development and basically revisit the ones that I think are going to be, shall we say, a stable amount of charge. Now, along with that, I am actually going to drop the weight. I'm just actually going to go from a 105 burger and also compare it to a 103 Hornady ELDX projectile. So, in all honesty, um, so the results is pretty surprising. So let's take a quick look at it as far as what are my results are. So let's get to the range. Okay. Oh, Okay, for part one, this is actually was shot in two different days uh, on the range. So this is the first part of, of the load development process that I did. And in this particular case, I was running a 105 burger bullets and try to do uh, load development for both the lever evolution and the stable match. And these are the results. I'm not going to bore you too much into the, the uh, shall we say, the numerical values that you see there. You could plainly see. But what intrigues me is the lever evolution at the 30.3 grain comes out at a 2592 velocity at a 0.5 MOA. And that's something that kind of intrigues me a little bit in a sense of there's... it. I expected a little bit more velocity out of it. So I'm not quite sure what was going on. But either way, if you look at row, um, the third row, halfway all the way down, uh, halfway through this target and all the way down, you can see where the stay ball match comes in. Started off with approximately 27.9 grain. It yielded me a 2385 velocity with an MOA of 8.8. .8. And as you can see, based off of the velocity drop, 
you can see my point of aim and point of impact has been reduced. Okay, so interestingly enough, as I increase the charges, I found um, the, the neighborhood of around the 28.7 and the 28.5 are somewhat intriguing in regards to uh, the tightness of it. Uh, being that the 28.7 comes out at 0.6 MOA with a velocity of 2463. All right, so let's take a look at today's. Okay, so now let's take a look at part two where I switch things up, basically running the 105 again, but a lot higher charges and maintaining that charge level, revisiting it basically. And then I'm going to compare it to a 103 Hornady ELD X projectile. Okay, so this is part two. And some, as you can see on the targets here, something strange is going on here. So I kept the same charge for the stay ball at 28.5. And I took a look at a 28.7 and a 28.9 range. And as you can see, something's really strange happening because the, the first time that I actually did the low development, my point of aim and point of impact suddenly went down. And for some strange reason, it has shifted back fairly close to where I would like to see it, point of aim, point of impact. And also the velocity actually went up. In this case, a 28.5 yielded me a 26.68 velocity with, an, with a, uh, a, a uh, SD of 7.5. Oh, I take it back, it's 0.7. I apologize for that. So I'm not gonna bore you again. I'm sure you could see all the results that I find here. So the first two rows leaving up to here, this is where all the stable is. And this one is the lever evolution, okay? Starting from here on the way down, are all running a 103 ELDX ammo. So as you can see here, it's quite interesting results. And I'm really looking at these results right here and I'm trying to decide um, what would I would stick to. What I'd like to do is to I have to do a little bit more comparison and contrast here in regards to this type of re this results. And I'm not quite sure what's going on as far as my point of aim, point of impacts what, uh, between the stay ball and the lever evolution. Though I'm quite happy with the results, I can't go wrong with any of them. Just to let you know, these are flyers. I did expect, uh, ended up getting a few flyers out. So this one's a flyer, this one's a flyer, and that one's a flyer. And uh, that one too, right there is a flyer. So that's how I judged it all up. So as you can see, I won't bore you too much with the numbers. You guys can see the numbers on it and the results. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose at least one beauty pageant uh, winner for this uh, low development and I'm gonna go ahead and start tuning them up see if I can get a tighter group again thank you so much and so based off of these results I think I'm going to narrow it down to um, basically a specific load that I would like to use for um, tuning the barrel now and see if I could get any better results. As a disclaimer, um, I do not uh, recommend going above what is uh, recommended for 
low charge. As you can see, I did go up a little bit higher and it, it seemed safe. There was nothing wrong with the case, no primer blowing out or anything at all. So um, it yielded some, it seems to be a fairly safe charge uh, for the maximum. For instance, when I did the, uh, when I did the, uh, for instance, when I did the stay ball, I placed the charge at 28.9, which is a few greens or half, half a grain or 0.2 grains more than typically what's recommended, but it did yield some fairly safe um, charges and there, there was no issue with the casing at all, nor the primer. Okay, I'm gonna go and continue on and uh, thanks a lot for uh, staying tuned. If you have any comments at all, please do leave down uh, below and uh, definitely I'd like to learn a little bit more on your interpretation to these results. Thanks.